Okay. And sometimes it's amazing that I, I realize <laughs> I have 4,700 videos that there's like a video I haven't made a topic on. A topic I haven't made a video on. There we go. I had it bass backwards. Um, I like have a lot of people, and I've explained this in countless other videos, that ISO in digital photography is not connected to exposure. It's actually applied gain to a captured, and captured is a past tense word, uh, applied gain to a captured signal. The third leg of exposure, of course, we all know what shutter speed and aperture is, i.e. gain in time. But the third leg, and, and of course I've explained this, but I have to go into uh, detail. This will be a really simple, brief video. is the SNR, or signal-to-noise ratio. I know a lot of you people have, uh, don't know about directional antennas. You are familiar with like fractal antennas and uh, uh, simple dipole antennas, stuff that you actually find in your uh, car and your uh, cell phone. But the directionality and gain is incredibly important. Uh, there's actually four things that actually dictate the gain or the uh, relational, uh, not the gain as far as aperture, but the actual uh, captured signal, i.e. the image gain. And those four things are saturation, and this is why ETTR is so important, exposed to the right. Uh, number two is uh, strobe or speed light. Uh, this is also a second shutter speed, especially when shooting low light conditions. Your shutter speed becomes basically irrelevant. You're freezing your motion based upon your T1 time or your flash duration time or speed light duration time. Um, number three is pixel pitch, uh, how big the eyeballs on your sensor are. And of course, uh, there's a lot of signal processing in the uh, on the uh, main board of your uh, digital camera that actually uh, processes out noise but uh, like some of the old cameras like the Nikon D4 here I mean it's got absolutely enormous uh, hoot owl uh, nocturnal uh, marsupial you know those marsupials with a gigantic uh, the D4 has got enormous photo sites on it but uh, it has uh, far less uh, advanced uh, signal processing and SNR processing uh, for actually dialing out the noise before it actually uh, drops the image on your uh, compact flash card or SD card. But that's still incredibly important. And this is why on uh, conventional um, uh, crop sensory cameras, for example, the uh, limit for acceptable dynamic range is maxed out at about 24 megapixels. It's upped by actually changing the architecture of that uh, through pixel efficiency by using a backside illuminated sensor where the actual wiring structure of the sensor is placed underneath the actual photoreceptors are placed on the top so we have better gain, better efficiency. Um, also too, uh, and I made, made videos about this and test samples and uploaded those about a half a year or so ago, you know the real reason why a black and white sensor is uh, so damn amazing is the uh, most amazing thing ever, far, far better than anything you'll ever spit out of any digital camera, is that uh, there's no color filter ray, you know, taking a piss on the light before it actually hits the sensor. Most people don't realize, it's like, well, how is my sensor capturing red, green, and blue and interpolating the image? Well, every sensor out there, except for, you know, true monochrome sensor, um, has a, a filter array over, whether that's bare or X-trans array. I mean, those are filters that are forever and ever sitting atop the sensor. It is actually a filtering out to red, green, and blue before it actually hits the sensor. When you remove that, I mean, you know, your sensor's photo sites go from this to, you know, this. Uh, black and white uh, sensors are incredible for that reason. I mean, this is, this is signal-to-noise ratio, S and R. Um, Everything is about signal gain, and those are the four factors that actually control it. That is the third leg of exposure. Why doesn't anybody talk about it? There's not even a single YouTube photography channel out there. I don't know if they like... I mean, I'm as a ham radio operator and an expert in field theory. You know, like I've got two books on field theory. One of them is insanely popular, by the way. You know, do they, does like somebody think I don't know what the hell I'm talking about? when it, Electromagnetism is electromagnetism. You know what the difference between a radio and a digital camera is? Jack, sh jack shit. There's not a damn difference between the two. Electromagnetic radiation is electromagnetic radiation, whether it's visible light or radio waves. Everything is about gain. You know what this antenna is analogous to? Well, it's analogous to the type of gain that's on your sensor. This is not really a good antenna, but it's good enough for, you know, turning on and busting a move and listening to Michael Jackson or whatever the hell it is you listen to. Um, so, saturation. 
which is why ETTR is so important. Strobe or speed light. I.e. Xena, really what it should say. This is why LED lighting sucks ass, by the way. LED lighting can never do what a xenon tube can do. A xenon tubes or speed lights, studios, it's all xenon tube. Boom. Incredibly fast, deep saturation. Um, I'm trying to think of a perfect analogy. LED lighting, and this is an LED right, right here, okay? <laughs> LED lighting is like a fly swatter. And a xenon tube, as found in your speed lighter strobe, is like a, a, a 308 uh, boat tipped hollow point. <laughs> so far as penetration, you know, instantaneous and deep. Um, pixel pitch, how big the eyeballs are on your sensor, but, you know, that, you know, depending on how the signal is actually processed, because the camera is not a sensor, camera is an image processor. This is why the Nikon D4, with its enormous photo sites, and it's still, you know, this camera still sells for 2,000 bucks all day. A huge photo sites, 16 megapixel, full frame camera. Yeah, huge ass photo sites. Also has to do with the uh, um, efficiency of the micro lens array, but uh, also SNR signal processing on the uh, the main board. But that's something else. But uh, that's the actual third leg of exposure, and that third leg of exposure has four incredibly important variables other than ambient lighting we all know what the hell ambient lighting is right saturation strobe lights or xenon tube what we should call it because it's a speed light or a studio strobe xenon tubes what we're talking about um, pixel pitch or the eyeball size um, see like an iPhone with perfect analogy you remember it's kind of like the blind ground mole I actually dug one up accidentally it's this cute little mole that looks hairless and it's got tiny, tiny, basically non-existent eyes. Those would be like the photo sites on your cell phone, <laughs> which is good enough if you have good light, right? And uh, then the photo sites on the Nikon D4 here, which would be like the hoot owl that is able to see in total darkness, or seemingly so. And uh, number four, efficiency. This has to do with uh, sensor lithography and design structure, infrastructure of uh you know like backside illumination versus standard foveate array all this there's only so many ways you can stretch and pull and twist and you know uh slap silicon wafer technology by the way there's only so many ways you could do it everything else becomes a signal processing and micro lens design there's only so many different ways you could there's like at last count, I've seen it like at least 50 different micro lens designs. It's kind of ingenious, but uh, and there's only so many ways you could squeeze an orange, right? It's like, well, we could drill a hole and squeeze it. We could cut it in half and blend it, and we can. <laughs> it's like silicon wafer. It's, there's a, there's a limit. You still got a damn orange, and there's only so much juice you're gonna squeeze out of the damn thing. Um, yeah, let's get back to the topic, right? I diverged a little bit, so. That's the third leg of digital photography exposure. It's not my opinion or belief. I hate it. The one thing that pisses me off is that, you know, do you think the guy that wrote the book on field theory, magnetism specifically, and is a ham radio operator, like doesn't know what the hell he's talking about when it, <laughs> when it comes to SNR? That's the third leg of exposure in digital photography. SNR, not ISO. And don't say, well, it's not ISO, it's ISO. Shut the hell up with that stuff. I hate it when people do that. <laughs> it's not ISO, International Standards Organization. Actually, on their own website, they say that both are correct. So, yeah, ISO, ISO, tomato, tomato, shut the hell up on that one. Um, ISO is not part of exposure in digital photography. It's not. If you don't believe me, go look up ISO invariance. Um, that's the reason why on professional radios, not on that radio, not on a regular radio, we've got a, like, brightness in Photoshop. we got this knob over here called volume. Actually, that's the tune. we got a volume knob over here in professional radio. There's another knob called gain. Gain is actually applying, uh, applied gain to the incoming signal that's coming off the antenna. Or in this case, the incoming signal that's coming off the, uh, um, sensor, then the AD converter. Well, actually, uh, applied gain occurs before the analog to digital converters. Excuse me. The signal is coming off the uh, sensor, then the uh, the applied gain or ISO is uh, then occurs before it goes on to the ADC analog digital converter. That stuff's important for taking good pictures. Well, it is really. This entire video is. I mean, if you know those four points: saturation, strobe, pixel pitch, and efficiency. 
If you understand that, then you understand. And no one's made a video on this. Nobody. Apparently nobody knows what the hell ISO is. For the... Well, this video is not about ISO. It's about the third leg of exposure. Why is it there's like 10,000 bazillion videos on photography on YouTube, but like nobody but me has made a video saying, hey, the third leg of exposure in photography, by the way, is not ISO. It is SNR, signal to noise ratio. You know when you're on like a noisy plane, they have those noise cancellation headphones? Like, ah. Got your normal headphones in, like your earbuds and the crying baby in the back seat. You can still hear that stinking ass crying baby. That, and you're trying to listen to your Bon Jovi or whatever the hell it is you're rocking out to. And you can still hear the stinking crying baby. That would what would be called bad signal to noise ratio. It's like, I'm listening to my Bon I'm listening to my Bon Jovi, but I can hear, still hear that crying brat in the back seat. <laughs> that is bad signal to noise ratio. Good signal to noise ratio is those big earmuffs, the really heavy ones. Don't have to be noise canceling here, but you plug it in and you turn on your Bach, which is what I'd be listening to. And you can't hear the stinking baby in the back seat. Yeah. That was for those people that don't understand what signal-to-noise ratio is. Signal-to-noise ratio. A ratio, I think I know what a ratio is. Everybody knows what a ratio is. I hope. Thank you so much for watching me. Like these videos, always click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever tickles your pickle. Whatever pets your worm. <laughs> I'll edit that out later. Namaste. Uvidimsa. Aloha. Paka. Dosvidanya. See y'all later. <laughs> That's how they talk in Alabama. Say y'all later. Nice seeing y'all. I've only been to Alabama once. I don't know if that's how people talk in Alabama or not. Probably not. I know that's how they talk in north central Florida, though. Hey, man, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Bye.